In his book, Deadly Spin, former health insurance executive Wendell Potter describes his industry's efforts to delegitimize Michael Moore's 2007 documentary, Sicko. According to Mr. Potter, the industry at large had a plan to figuratively, quote, push Moore off the cliff. In our third story tonight, my guests, Wendell Potter and Michael Moore, will discuss cliffs and pushes for the first time. Of course, the premise of Sicko was to highlight the fundamental flaws in this nation's for-profit health care system, as well as the benefits of universal health care at a time when no one in this country was even really talking about either. According to Potter, insurers feared the movie could crater their industry. So to subvert the movie, Potter says American health insurance plans, AHIP, funded a campaign to smear Sicko. The principals, a public relations firm, APCO, which in turn created a front group called Healthcare America, and some media outlets took the bait. June 2007, USA Today prints an op-ed critical of Sicko's premise. The author Sarah Burke was identified as executive director of Healthcare America, a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization. No acknowledgement that Burke was essentially on the payroll of the health insurance industry. The same Sarah Burke showed up in that infamous CNN Sanjay Gupta report on Sicko. Burke, never identified in the piece, told CNN's audience that Michael Moore, quote, played fast and loose with the facts. An ironic quote in retrospect. Joining me now as promised, Academy Award winning filmmaker Michael Moore and the former head of corporate communications at Cigna, now senior fellow on uh, healthcare at the Center for Media and Democracy, author of the new book Deadly Spin, Wendell Potter. Gentlemen, good evening. Thanks for your time. Hey, Keith. Hey, uh, Michael. Good evening, Keith. Wendell, on your blog oh. today, uh, you apologized to, to Michael Moore. Is there anything you'd like to say to him more or less in person here? Well, I'm sorry for the, for the uh, part that I played in, uh, in attacking the movie. I did see the movie actually twice before it was screened uh, uh, across the country, once in Sacramento when you had the, the initial screening and then the, the official premiere uh, in your hometown in Bel Air. Um, I, I knew when I saw the movie the first time that you had really gotten a lot of it right, and I was really not very happy at all to have to be a part of the effort to uh, discredit the movie, but I was still working for the industry then, so my, my apologies. Well, uh, well. first of all, uh, Wendell, thank you for saying that, and, and, and certainly the apology is accepted. Um, and in fact, I, I think of you as a real hero. Uh, you've done something very brave and courageous, um, giving up um, a, a very good job uh, and knowing that you uh, would not earn that income again and probably be vilified by this industry and uh, to come forward. I mean, I've been making these movies for over 20 years, and I've never had a top executive come forward. and. Um, admit what you've admitted, and, um, and and yet I've been dealing with this with every movie since Roger and me. When I remember, uh, actually, the, the, I was on the Tonight Show. It was my first time ever on uh, national TV, and and uh, uh, 20 minutes before the show, they're telling me that uh, the, some executive from General Motors is there with a packet of information about Michael Moore and trying to smear me to the people. The producers of the, of the Tonight Show, and it was uh, that same line that that the your person, the Healthcare America, the fake organization uh, that that CNN used and USA Today used, and so many other media outlets used when Sickle came out, mm -hmm. saying he plays fast and loose with the truth. And and I've listened to that for 20 years, and it's always a lie because all the facts in my film are always true, and I'm very very careful with this. I, I take it so seriously. And and because I want I want to win the political argument that I'm trying to make, so the very first and foremost thing is that things have to be correct. And so, when when you were working at Cigna and uh, what what you know um, your insurance all the insurance executives apparently I read your book this weekend uh, all got together and and met a number of times and uh, and you came to this small village uh, in Michigan where I was living. And um, I, I didn't realize it until I read your blog this morning uh, that, that uh, actually you had um, um, we'd met before, That's right. and that you were uh, you were there as you said in the blog this morning to spy on me and to do reconnaissance and uh, on the film. And it was um, um, you know I've had to go through a lot of this stuff for so long, and just to, I'm just so um, you know if, if, if you don't mind, Keith, I don't I'm, I don't mean to like I, I, if, could I could I ask Wendell a question? Go ahead, or, please, or Michael, please. I, 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 um, I mean, there's maybe we can. This is the first time we've talked, so there's maybe we can talk later. Um, I hope so. But I, I just, you mentioned that your son, uh, you took your son to the screening right. when you came to the little town that, that I'm in in Michigan, um, um, and I'm just wondering. Uh, you said that he was that. Uh, I mean, you sat next to him during these two hours. He's watching on the screen what you do for a living. Um, which is, as you say in your book, contributing to the deaths 
of 45,000 Americans every single year because of this for-profit health insurance system we have. It causes that many deaths every year, and, and you say in the book that you were you're part of that. And I'm just wondering, as you were sitting there next to your son, being a dad myself, I just, I, and, and after the movie, he wants to come up and have his picture taken with me, and you say it this morning in your blog that, that he's telling you that, that I'm his hero, and yet here's, he's watching what you do for a living. At that time, I'm just curious what that, what that must have done to you or how you felt uh, going through that experience. He knew that I was having uh, problems with the job that I was having to do, uh, and that I was having misgivings about what I was supposed to be doing as a spokesman for the industry. And as you depicted in the, in the movie, a lot of the people in this country have insurance, but it's very, very inadequate. And uh, people are finding every day that the insurance that they think they have is going to be there for them really isn't. Uh, and he's, he saw me be very affected by that movie. It's hard uh, to watch that movie and, and, uh, and, and, and not almost tear up uh, many times during the movie. And he and I talked, and I told him uh, that I, I, I was thinking of leaving my job. I didn't know how I could do it, but I felt like I, I should do something other than what I was doing. I just didn't feel very good about having to do what I had done to uh, spy on your movies, to uh, go to the back of the theater and take notes as I was watching it. And uh, you know, then come back and know that I was going to have to be on the front line of, of the uh, calls from the media when it did start showing nationwide, and people would be calling me about the um, the people who were Signa members in the movie. That was going to be tough, and I knew it was going to be tough. Well, uh, right. when, when, it, the, go, go ahead, Michael. Yeah. No, I was just at the time when you saw CNN falling, uh, taking the bait, and mm. USA Today, and and Time Magazine, and. Um, you know, m much of the media using the actual language that you and your guys developed right. on, on referring to me as against the American principles, socialist, all this stuff. Um, and of course, Fox News then taking it and, <laughs> you right. know, running with it. Um, um, I mean, that must feel like, I mean, it must be a real victory when you're in those meetings, um, mm -hmm. um, having a sense that, that when you can actually get our, our major media organizations that supposedly have responsible journalists to just repeat verbatim your talking points. Oh, it was it was it was just amazing. We uh, we had a clipping service. I mean, we, we every every day we would get uh, articles that would appear that had our talking points in them. Uh, and this, by the way, is a 23-page PR plan that was uh, uh, developed and carried out against the movie. I was at the meeting when it was explained, and uh, I'm not supposed to have this. This was uh, mm. uh, something that was actually obtained by Bill Moyers when he did an interview with me uh, last year. Um, but uh, can, I, can, can I just read a can I just read a line? Actually, I, I pulled up Bill Moyers thing. Uh, mm. I, there's a line in that in that plan that you guys put together, where you said, I'm, I'm quoting, um, the worst case scenario mm -hmm. uh, right. would be that Sicko would evolve into a sustained populist movement. Right. That that was your worst fear right. that this movie could make that happen. That's exactly right. And the industry monitored public opinion uh, from the from that moment prior to the uh, premiere of the movie or the, the national release of the movie until you know many weeks after the premiere, just to see uh, what public how public opinion had changed, and um, also uh, monitored the box office receipts of the movie and and uh, all these clips that we we got. Uh, many of them were placed by uh, Healthcare America, which, as we've talked before, is a, a front group and uh, a very successful one at that. Uh, Michael, hold they, on a they second. Know, I've got to they take, know if uh, there was a populist Michael? movement against them, they Michael? know that if there was a pop populist movement against them, Michael, that'd be the end me. of their... I've got, yeah. to, I've got to take a commercial break. If you guys can stick oh, so, around, sorry. we'll do this after. Obviously, we have to sell something. Oh, uh, I'm so sorry, Keith. I didn't no, mean no, that. No. That's all right. You're, uh, I was staying back for, uh, deliberately. Michael Moore and uh, Wendell Potter, stand by. We're going to take a quick break and resume where we were in just a moment. Former Cigna executive Wendell Potter and filmmaker Michael Moore, two of the heroes of health care reform, continue their first conversation next on Countdown. We'll resume where we were now in the first conversation between the former Cigna executive Wendell Potter, now an insurance industry whistleblower, and Michael Moore, the film director of Sicko. Michael, you were saying before the commercial interrupted, you had a follow-up with a question to, uh, to Wendell. Well, I was just, I, I, I'm so, I, and I just, I know I'm a little, I, 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 it's the first time we've had a chance to, to talk, and I, um, I just, I, I mean, Wendell, I just want to say, first of all, you, uh, I mean, you're the, you're the Daniel Ellsberg of uh, corporate America. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, uh, 
that that what that man did during Vietnam helped to end that war, and uh, it would be my wildest dream that what your courageous action has done here to, and not just about my movie and me. Uh, people should read this book. I mean, it is the whole book lays it right out there about how um, uh, uh, the health insurance companies have bamboozled this country and yeah. and and lied, just outright lied about things. And um, it, it uh, to have you say in the book that the what I said in the film that everything in there is true and that this is that is what it's like in Canada that, that people do have it better they do live three years longer yeah. um, it, it just it really I I just was just amazed as I turned every page of this book and I just I, I was just you know thinking that that this this big fear of theirs that there might be a, a populist uprising against the insurance companies because I I believe that if people listen to what you have said and what you're writing that um, that eventually that will happen because people will see them sure. for the organized crime syndicate that they are. That's what they're set. They're set up to not to help you with your health. They're set up to make a profit, and the only way they make a big profit is to deny as much health care as possible to the people trying to get help. That's the bottom mm -hmm. line. It's a sick, rotten system, and for you to come forward like this is just. Um, it's just really. I'm just. Uh, I, I just can't say enough for what you've done. Um, well, well, thank you, Michael. But you know, I've I've been doing this for not even 18 months, and and you and many other people have been advocating for you know good health care reform for much longer than than I have. So I uh, I'm I'm glad to finally be on what I think is the right side this time, and to do what I can to try to pull the curtains back so people can see exactly what these companies do to to win, and uh, uh, and to manipulate public opinion to influence public policy, which is at the at the core of what I've been writing about. Uh, well, let me let me jump in, Wendell. The, APCO, that that PR firm, issued a statement today that seems to contrast uh, some of the previous remarks you made about this, this personal oppo research uh, on on Mr. Moore. Let me quote them: APCO did not conduct research on Michael Moore's family. We did not attempt to suppress turnout for his movie. Explain what you know about the personal research that was done on Michael Moore and his family. Yeah, I think uh, whoever wrote that, I think uh, she was just protesting too much. Mm -hmm. uh, the industry did an enormous amount of research uh, on on what we thought was going to be in the movie, and on uh, Michael Moore as a movie maker. I myself did. I, uh, I I've seen every one of Michael Moore's movies, read all three of his books. I've seen every all 24 episodes of The Awful Truth. I know uh, where you <laughs> went to school, and know when you dropped out of college. Uh, I know who you're married to, and uh, so I know a lot about you. And everybody in the industry knows a lot about you. We needed to know as much as we could. Not that we necessarily were, were going to be using that if we didn't have to, uh, but one of the things that I was afraid about doing what I'm doing was that I would be attacked not by the industry directly, but by its allies or its shills to uh, try to attack my character, my reputation. Um, so that's, that's what goes on mm. in a lot of the campaigns like this. When, when this, when this, when you, when you were doing this research and the spying and, on myself and my uh, family, what I mean, to what ends, really? Because, you know, obviously they don't want to. They don't really want to have the debate on the issue, whether or not a for-profit health insurance right. system is what's really best for Americans. Right. They want to do it. They, their main. It seemed like their main goal was. Um, if people get in to see that film, we're doomed. So we've got yeah. to make sure as few people see that film as possible. And the way to do that is to smear Michael Moore, call him anti-American, mm -hmm. say that he's not telling the truth. Yeah. Um, um, and 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 as you you said the other day, you said that you wanted that you guys were ready for uh, for Plan B if that failed, if the movie was getting too much traction, that um, it might be necessary to. Push me off a cliff uh, right. were, were were the words. What what exactly did did that mean? Well, I was in that meeting, and those words indeed were said. And uh, uh, it was it was not literal, obviously, uh, but I think it, it it meant that we would do what we had to do to uh, uh, create ads and op eds that we would to get uh, conservative pundits uh, to, to place in, in newspapers and the whole, with the whole objective of as they call it reframing the debate uh, to try to move move uh, the attention from them to you as a filmmaker. I know we're running out of time, but I, I just, uh, can I, I just, the, the, I notice a lot of the, the comments that Bush made about me in his recent book, it's like the exact language that's in the uh, health insurance industry plan against me about what names mm -hmm. to call me, right. um, how to refer to me. 
Uh, do you, I mean, and I noticed on this, on your group, you had uh, Bush administration officials as part of, they were on the board of mm -hmm. the fake organization, Healthcare America. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, right. what's the connection there? Yeah, it, it, we had a lot of Republicans and a lot of conservatives on on the board, and 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 people who were pollsters for the Republicans, uh, and, and and were becoming pollsters for uh, uh, the industry and uh, for Healthcare America. It was uh, it was it was all connected. Gentlemen, I'm I'm out of time, but uh, it's been time extraordinarily well spent. Uh, Wendell Potter, uh, former Cigna executive, and Michael Moore, of course. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Wendell. We'll postpone our full follow-up on the Arizona death panels till tomorrow night to give you a brief update on that after we told you about the Arizona decision to renege on insurance promised for transplants. And now we introduce you to two victims, Francisco Felix and Randy Shepard. Following that broadcast, the National Transplant Assistance Fund, an organization that helps raise money for transplants, was overwhelmed with donations. It raised $36,000 on Friday night alone, and they're still counting what they raised over the weekend. And you can still donate to the individual funds at ntafund.org.